And there you go. Gabriel on the seat on the left of your screen, playing against uh, Tomohiro Saito on the right of your screen. Good look, it's Japanese yeah, player. Cool. Okay, both players keep their hands and they're off with game one. I'm Randy Bueller, he's in here with Mike Flores, covering the Pro Tour Atlanta semifinal match, the real star studded semi, one okay. spin against Nova. Cool. Get a good look at Saito's grip. He's got the Kami to hunt, the tracker Kami, they're the Rat Samurai. Do you think that, well, that uh, Nassif was actually confused about what color Saito is going to play? He has two Sozenkan bruisers in his deck. And, I mean, let's recall that Saito was drafting aggressive red the entire... Uh, yeah, he was the black red. He was in their yeah, black red seat, right? He's got Yamabushi's Flame, Double Ronin Hound Master, Frost Wielder. But they're all in the sideboard. All in his sideboard. And I think Nasif would not have played those Sozenkan Bruisers main deck if he had realized that Saito was just wow. going to go straight up green black. And that, that might, was the switch we were talking about that, during the draft. If that he, might cost the reigning player of the year. Game one? Efficiency. I don't know if it'll cost him a match, but it'll cost him a great deal of efficiency in this game. Pretty interesting. I mean, Sozo Camp is a really mediocre creature when they put us in a mountain. Definitely. Uh, no, it's pretty interesting. And when we talk about it, I mean, the Japanese have never really wavered. Their whole strategy was, we know which colors make sense in which seats. Let's just draft them and oh. stick to them because we'll get paid off later. But they actually audible here. I mean, they opened up Kumano in the wrong seat, and, you know, they had they had some other opportunities. So they actually audible. Maybe the Bruisers were part of the reason they audible. They watched the Seath pick up a couple, so that was all the more reason to get Saito out of red. And what he wound up playing is as a black-green deck. I can't imagine that Saito thinks that his matchup is great. He went into green so late, and the Seath has so many legends mm -hmm. uh, that, that okay. I think that he's trying to pick up whatever advantage he can. What creature is that on the Seath side? Is it Humble Badoka? It's hard to see. I think so. Yeah, Humble Badoka. So Humble Badoka up against Rat Samurai is the current fight we're seeing. Uh, do you think that Nassif crashes in here? What do you think? Hold back. He has got first volley in his deck, which is awesome against against Rat Samurai. That sound was Tomohiro Saito slapping himself in the face. He slaps himself in the face a lot. He does. Is that like he's psyching himself up? What's the... Katsuhiro Mori does that too. I mean, I think they're both just trying, you know, yeah, get their get their own attention, get the adrenaline flowing a little, I guess. No blocks. I'm sure that was a block that Nassif would have been happy to make. Okay, uh, trade. Trade. So, and... Yep. The reigning player of the year, Gabriel Nassif, <coughs> drops Kami to hunt and says go. Accidentally played only 40 cards this weekend. <laughs> Forgot the other 20 cards. Okay. No block. Kami the hunt is potentially a devastating attacker. His spearcraft abilities. So deceptive. Like he just looks like a gray ogre, but if you're in the wrong attack phase and all of a sudden he's nine million, nine million. <laughs> Especially I think in a, a deck like the Seeps. He's got uh, a lot of good cards. Saito serves with his Rat Samurai. Um, five, five, yeah, here, same. No blocks. Okay. Well, interesting choice on the part of Nasif. He's playing with commune with, with nature, which is not an automatic play whatsoever. Like a lot of people don't like it at all. Okay. But in a deck like Nasif's, he's gonna have a high percentage chance of hitting a creature in the in the top cards of this deck. And the creature that he takes could very well be a dragon legend, <laughs> the, the open fist. Commune with nature, here it comes. What's he got? Three lands, a Suzuki summons, and a Budoka. Oh, oh sorry. Okay. Budoka. Humble Budoka. One of these humble Budokas is going to be fighting that samurai oh, yeah. very soon. That mana snake is awesome. I love him. Yep.
Saito looks over. Get a trap from Kami. Wax main. Sorry, pedal main. Pedal main. And let's settle land. Looks like another spell main. I didn't see which one it was exactly. Something oh. like that Sensei's divining tops. He's running top with how many reshuffles? I'm looking. I don't know if you have any. At least a reach, right? I think it's just the reach. It's fine. Like he probably needed something to round out his deck. He switched to green so late. He's not splashing any of his red cards. Um, I think I would not be surprised. I should say, if Saito went into a red splash after game one, after establishing that he doesn't have mountains, <laughs> and then just like do the you know the double juke, like oh you have Sozen Can Bruiser, and then like as he's taken out the Sozen Can Bruiser, he's like just kidding, I really was red, <laughs> and uh, you know little things like that can add up. Meanwhile, on the other tables, Gabe Sang bringing the beats with the Ronin War Club Blade Master, and uh, I believe Dave Root is also bringing the beats. Is is that Mystic Restraints on on uh, Color of Tales? Color of Tales. That's what it looks like. Yes, that's exactly. That's what it so looks sad. Like, uh, that's like the worst creature to put it on. I mean, if Teller's in play, it doesn't matter who you put it on. Right? Like it's just it's just sad. I'm saying. Eh, not a happy time. Okay. So yeah, Dave Rude bringing the beats, Gabe Sang bringing the beats. I mean, he's already shown two of his glacial rays this game. Yeah, Dave Rude obviously had an awful great start. Yeah. Saito playing a bunch of creatures. None of them are awesome. Though. No, really not. Like he doesn't have that many awesomes. He has does a he patron. have a good card in this? He has draw? a patron. No, in this. Oh, in the draw? I don't think so. It's like Kami the Hunt is the best card he's drawn. Yeah, I think the two four guy is very good. Spring caller. Mana being five mana being fast. Is it a giant? Yep. Little Kumo. Uh, this game looks like it's settled in for a uh, long winter stalemate. Yes. <laughs> Saito's got trap root Kami, so that would really help if they got into a stalemate. But if that's the case, like, how's he gonna bust through and win? That's what we gotta ask ourselves. He's got some giants, like, plus Kami's pretty giant. Patron of the Nizumi's pretty big. Well, rather than wait and see how the stalemate breaks out, let's check in on some games where there's a little more action going on. See if we can shift our cameras up to uh, table A, I believe, is where Dave Rude and who's Rude playing? Kenji. Playing Kenji. Kenji Sumura. Yeah, there's the Seif. There's Saito. The Seif with his customary, oh, I never have anything. My hands are always terrible. Pose. The Seif plays like that when he's got, like, blind with anger. Of course he does. So, meanwhile, on table A... We can see it. There is on Dave Root's side of the board, one flyer plus a teller of tails with mystic restraints. Oh, glacial ray. Zubera. Yeah, he's still got glacial ray. Oh. All kinds How of shenanigans. Disgusting. There's Dave Root with the cap on the right of your screen. Kenji Samura on the left. Glacial ray, double trigger, take out Talowisp, untap, untap three three flyer. Probably just gonna block the river kaijin here, which will go lethal on the river kaijin. Oh, cool. there's a giant block. And things look pretty good for Dave Rude. Kenji doesn't want to draw him in Ammo's meddling now. Like it would be a bad time. <laughs> Having suffered through the glacial rays. His board is just... Yeah, we talked about that. Oh, good lord. Is that Kalo Rude's hand? Kalo Jushi and Torrent of Stone. And... she was bounced to turn it is that Is that consuming Vortex like as well? 
Wow. So, pretty sick. in order to win, Kenji's gonna have to play a strategy that's not based on creatures, damage, <laughs> blocking, or attacking. I think his strategy at this point is offer a split. <laughs> he, the really disgusting word is really gonna just bring with his guys that have, uh, that have, uh, mystic restraints because he's got so much arcane. <laughs> True. Dave Rude, surprised not to be playing World of Warcraft today. That was the previous plan. Their team name is actually the name of their guild. Off in the lands of Blizzard's new computer game. I don't know about computer games. I managed to avoid World of Warcraft. A lot of my friends play, like I went to Tony Sai's house, like who was with Dave Price. Mm -hmm. and, like I was hanging out with Tony, he just sits there like playing, just, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, we're running around killing monsters. <laughs> I'm like... Are you max? He's like, I'm maximum level. I'm like, well, what's the fun in the game? Yeah, kill, well, kill there's monsters. The scoop. Dave Rude way too far ahead. Kenji Samura cannot come back, so score one for Nova. Dave Rude gets the first game up. And I mean, that's with Kenji doing some Tala Wisp abuse. All right. We are going to try to get a quick look at on uh, Gabe Sang's match well, on our tour around the feature match area. Dave Rude takes it in. Gabe Sang is mired against someone here in Saito. Sorry, uh, Gabe Nassif. Mired in game one against someone here in Saito. Gabe Sang, rumored to be winning. We'll see if we can get a look at it. Dave has a Wicked Akuba. It's a Blade Master and a Bleeder. And a Gibbering Kami with a War Club. Kaji has a cohort, and a cruel deceiver, and a soul of magma. Then he lines up his attack. His plan should be to draw his one. master Yamabushi. Yeah, it's uh, I think he learned that move from Brian Hacker back in the day. Brian Hacker, the man that taught the world how to beat down. You know what you do in limited? You turn all your creatures sideways. You shove them into the red zone. It wasn't even a red zone, but he basically invented the red zone. So far ahead of his time, he was using the red zone before it existed. He top 16 to Pro Tour once, where he took Matenda Herder <laughs> over uh, Karavik's Torch for his red white beatdown <laughs> deck. And what? And he's I don't, like, I don't think I believe he's you. like, I had a lot of X's, but I didn't have enough ones. <laughs> and then he just like ran out the beats, and then. I think boys were in that top eight, right? John, you made that top eight. Yeah, he top 16. We made that top eight. But like he's like, I you, you can't have too many X's. Like, <laughs> that and Tama Hero scoops. We that, got there just for the end of it. That I team that go. should yeah. remain nameless. Uh, <laughs> that that team they didn't they didn't like to play a lot of the land. It was like mirrored in block. Sure. You know, like so. Gabe like, Sang scores hmm. one. Nova up a game, up a game. We'll go back to see if uh, anybody can break through in a game and see versus someone here at Saito match. Let's look at what evasion creatures are there. So we've been talking about the switch that... Uh, one spin did during the draft. Kaji wound up playing black, red, green. So he's actually got a three color deck. How many forests? Just a couple. He's got double Kadama's Might and basically splashing for two, Kadama, two forests for two Kadama's Might. You don't usually want that. You want like a green X deck splashing a third color, not an XY deck splashing. Well, and he green. was supposed to be the base green five oh, color deck, and it just. He got the the Master Yamabushi, so he went. He turned into a. Uh, they did the switch, and he turned red black. Do you think Not they clear how well it's going to work out? Do you out think for they him. could have tried to go red green there? Not sure. <clears throat> Meanwhile, back where we started, Saito has done a little more damage. And no, oh, there's a sure. green Honda in play. Sure. Seif just cast green Honda. Even less likelihood of bashing through with Green Honda going. Some potential to 
build up an They're army overwhelmed, and tackle, sure. right? But in terms of stalling the ground, it's very annoying to get. So here's an inter world. interesting question from the uh, from the message boards. What was the most <coughs> the most exciting game between Legends Kai Booty and John Finkel? When was it, and how did it end? Have they ever played? They played in uh, Chicago in the semifinals. Like they played a Sunday match on stage on camera. That was I remember that one. That was that was pretty serious. What format was that extended? Uh, it was limited. Limited. Yeah, it was uh, yeah. Yeah. Rochester Draft. I bet John didn't win that one. John That's did not. Good win. cards. Kai won that first one. Yeah. Beat uh, Nikolai in the finals. That's it. I can't think it's of like Chicago or I mean, there have been a lot of top eights where, like, you, like if John had won, he would have been fighting Kai. Right. But then, like, he didn't win. Genju of the Cedars in the red zone. Interesting. I don't think from 14 that Nasif is even going to consider blocking that. Gonna destroy his board. It's the only forest. Yeah, but it's gonna. <laughs> yeah, I think that I, it's the only time I can remember Boudet and Finkel playing on Sunday. I don't think it's that relevant that it's the only forest. He has green production from Petal Main Baku and from and from uh, the Spring Caller. Mm -hmm. I think that this is he's, is he just making a show, or, or unless he's got some sort of no, trick that he can save a guy. I guess I'm wrong. I guess that's <coughs> that's what the player of the year does. Yeah, hard to argue with the player of the year, huh? I mean, but how bad is it if Saito is just sandbagging a forest? <laughs> yeah, I mean, back on Finkel and Booty, I'm sure they've played a bunch of times. They've played the Invitational a bunch of times. I'm sure they've ran into each other in this switch from time to time. If you're talking about like mano a mano, who has the edge, me versus yeah. who, they count. Yeah. Does Nasif have a trick in his hand, Becker? Like, if he has a trick, it's cool. No trick. I mean, it's card for card here. You're gonna have to kill all the forests eventually, right? What else is he going to do about the injury? But like the, the thing that I don't like about it is that Saito's got so such a better board position in terms of guys sure. that that um yeah the thief could just get overrun at some point. Yeah, cool. Saito play a lander. Oh, then he he just like uses his sensei's divining top to set up a forest yeah. and then replay the genju. Nice, terrible. <laughs> What animal did uh, Nassif just play? That's funny. Well, he got a token. <laughs> oh, that's a token. <laughs> what kind? Uh, it's a what kind? An angel? I guess I'm oh, pretty near the door rolling deck. It's pretty obvious. Okay. That's fine, too. Oh, how lucky. A legend. Do you see mm. Red Dragon in the house? My Off favorite, the top. my favorite thing about this is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seiroyusi wants to fight against Green Genju, and he loses. Oh well, lost the fight, <laughs> won the war. Meanwhile, take a quick peek in at Table A. Dave Rude, Dave Rude's board on the left of your screen. He's got a Frost Wielder and a Mirror Guard, playing against Kenji Samura, with his usual blue white deck on the right of your screen. He's got uh, what is that in play? Ninja of the Deep Hours. That's a very good card. The Frost Wielder is just an amazing card against Samura, isn't it? He's got... Yeah, Frost Wielder seems very good against Samura. Yeah, double Frost Wielder, double Glacial Ray. This is Rude's amazing deck of ridiculous red removal. Oh, Mystic Restraints on the Frost Wielder, so. That's why Sumura picked up those Mystic Restraints. It yeah, shuts down. We talked about helps. that in the draft. It's a very important card in his ability to compete with the, quote, ridiculous red removal <laughs> of Rude's deck. I, you can't be unhappy bashing with Ophidian Ninja, though. True. Sure. I think, what, what do you think Finkel's opinion would be of Ophidian Ninja? 
the Fidian would. I'm sorry. John would much rather have Twice. regular Fidian than a Fidian Ninja. There's no doubt. Yeah. John played Tradewind Rider decks that had seven creatures in them. Wow. Well, there goes Glacial Ray. Oh, Vortex bouncing Frostwielder, splicing Glacial Ray. So down goes Mr. Restraints. Down goes Ophidian Ninja. Frostwielder is going to be back online again. After and there's two mana open. Like, can't you just even have it, like a play you can make? Just wow. going to walk into a removal spell here. Crazy. Uh, unless Dave just doesn't want to use it, which is potentially worse. Uh, Mothrider Samurai. Do you think that's worth huh. a removal spell, or you think he's just going to try Apparently, to crash Root in there? Apparently Root does not think it's worth crash a removal spell. Crash in there with spell. his 3-1. I mean, he might, he might have a split. If he's got another Arcane spell, it's... Untap, splice a Glacial Ray. No, he's just going for Frost Do you think he, he's going to crash here, or what? It makes sense for Samur to just run it out there. He's got to do something to get that Glacial Ray out of Root's hand. Certainly would prefer to make him blow it now rather than draw more arcane. Kenji left open a white, but I mean, Dave probably knows he doesn't have a blessed breath. What's this? Frostling. Frostling and Frost Wielder. Yeah, they could tag team. Kenji. That's a bad, bad trade. Obiku, Night Flower versus Rayuse. But that's just a terrible fight for Saito. Like, say you kill Rayuse. <laughs> the fact that he was so far ahead on the board just means that he loses more perms. True. And there's two more legends in the Thief stack. And Venerable Kumo gets back a guy for Nasif. And he's got the Honda running. So, looking decent for Do you Nassif. think that it's fair to say that? Nassif is winning this game, despite the fact that Kiko's online on the other side. Looks like it. Take a good look at Sumura's hand there. He's got some stuff, but not clear what he's supposed to do against Frostwilder plus Glacial Ray. Oh, DC question here, wondering which World of Warcraft server and faction Nova plays on. I'll ask that over lunch. Question: I have enough people playing World of Warcraft back at the office that this question makes sense to me. Really? It's not like this Charlie Brown card. Sometimes people start talking about the MMRPGs, or it's like what you know our girlfriends must feel like when we start talking about magic. It's just like we're in a Charlie Brown cartoon. Wah, wah, we have wah, girlfriends. Wah. Some of us. We have a girlfriend. <laughs> we both have wives. Yeah, so. Wife. They were girlfriends back when we were talking about I'm magic. Not at least admitting that I have a girlfriend in a position where my <laughs> wife might be listening. <laughs> I mean, I do, but oops. <laughs> Becker points out that I've never been able to pull anything from my wife ever. <laughs> that is correct. Aaron Forsyth is giggling in the audience because he knows what it feels like. <laughs> How's Dell? How's the new kid? Oh, Kira's awesome. I have a... She's almost six months old. They have been suffering through baby's first illness. It's all very sad. Mine's never been sick. She's going on a wow. year and she's like ten months now. So Kami the Painted Road comes down for Kenji Sumo. Does that help? I, mean, I guess it's 3-3. Three, three. He's tapped out. I mean, like, does Root just kill the Moth Rider and drag for 3 here? Seems fine, right? Oh my goodness. Dave Root drew Psychic Puppetry that turn. Oh my, so he can Psychic Puppetry, he can untap the Frost Wielder, Wielder splicing, splicing Glacial, the glacial Ray. Ray. Oh, good grief. Murray Evans has got to be like, <laughs> clapping Hello, his Canadian. hands and yeah, there's the Frost clapping Wielder. and like, oh, if only, if only there were Battle Mad Ronin in play, wow. it would be the best play ever. This glacial Ray takes down Moss Rider Samurai, and it's still in his hand for later. <laughs> just Frost Wielder untaps, <laughs> it's going to ping the Painted Road again. So basically, Psychic Puppetry and Frostling trade for Sumura's entire board, and oh, by the way, attack for three. And I have three mana untapped, oh, threatening boy. Glacial Ray plus whatever other shenanigans I can come and up with. And Kenji's down one of his one of his uh, Mystic Restraints, right? Oh, oh Kenji Sumura actually threw Manamo's meddling that turn. But how, why would he do that, knowing that Dave was holding? The, the glacial ray. Wow, how good would metal? I mean, he wouldn't have. It wouldn't have actually been that. Good. It would have just been good. Would have been like counter something and still. 
But I'm not sure he would. He wouldn't have played psychic puppetry if yeah, Sabura but, hadn't played a guy. Yeah, but like, Dave would have just gone Frostling the two-two flyer, uh, Frost Wielder the two-two flyer, Crack the right. three. Like, yeah. That's what what he would have done. And right. then like, I mean, it doesn't. Do I, I don't think I don't think he could afford to sit on on meddling man. He's he's behind on the board, so he can't just sit on counter magic. Doesn't help. What's that? Meanwhile, another frost wielder and grip. <laughs> is that what it is? If so, that would be disgusting. Yes, it's another frost wielder. Wow, this this is crazy. Well, this was the match that I, I thought was the most lopsided of the three. David Root's deck just came together magnificently. I, I agreed that this match would have gone in the favor of, of Root, but I had no idea it was going to be such a blowout. Then again, I called a. I called saying to lose, and he's up the game, right? Yep. How can you bet against the juggernaut? I'm not good. Oh, okay. Cool. So consuming vortex, bounces Root's flyer. He settles for the red Zubera and a bunch of mana untapped. All right. Meanwhile, over on the Nasi versus Saito match, Saito did his best to beat down before he was forced to kill Ryusei. Eventually, K Kiku did take down Ryusei. Lost, Saito lost the rest of his board in the aftermath, but he dropped a Wicked Akuba, so he's got a guy. Yeah, but then he's facing off Venerable Kuma with Soul Shift and Active Green Hondin. Yeah. I mean, the Kuma died, but... Yeah, but then it Soul Shifted. What did, he, what did it Soul Shift back? I'm sure he got back like Kami the Hunt. Yeah, Kami the Hunt, exactly. Oh, Teller of Tales. That's fair. And the meddling has to just nail Teller of Tales. That's his focus defiance. Oh, sorry, never mind. Did we misunderstand or does he still have the meddling in his hand? Yeah, so he's still got it. Two. Is that a Jushi? Yeah, Kala Jushi in play. Straight up Jushi? He's my least favorite of the flippy guys. Really? I don't like him that much. I like the black one. Like, 4-4s four are good. The red one's gas. He's 5 power. Who doesn't like to attack for 5? I don't know if Rude has to actually cast any more spells to win this game. Like, he's got this grip. He's like, maybe I should just pass. I think he'll probably play Frost Wielder here, though. In the forums, they think we should sell commercials, commercial time in the breaks between matches. I guess I like people wanting us to have more money. <laughs> I consider that awesome. Can we get a brokenness estimate on Bob the Great One Maher's card from the Invitational? It's pretty good. What is it? It well. I mean, he submitted... The uh, Poison deck card. No, 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 no. He submitted a real card. The real card he submitted was BB22. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library. Pay life equal to the casting cost. Put it in your hand. I don't like that. Okay. It's... Free land. It's pretty powerful. But anyway, yeah. We'll, we will be showing off the art from that card at the Invitational this year. But isn't... The card's in Ravnica. The tradition is to have all of the Invitational cards be animals, right? Not like... It's always like a, a meddling maid. It's not like no, no. It's not. Yeah, but I thought that you were saying that was a. That's like that's a guy. Yeah, it's a guy. Oh, I didn't realize it was a it's guy. It's a two two. Oh, okay. It's a two mana two two with that ability. I thought it was just a four mana enchantment or something. No, no. no it it costs DB is our our lingo, two black mana, to play, and it's a two two creature. Yeah, it's very good. I don't like guys that cost four. He costs two. Oh wait, I was so dumb. So he cost BB yes. for a 2-2. Two -two. Yes. So I was like, oh, I thought it came up. It's a bear. Four. How about that? Oh, nope. that's awesome. I love <laughs> bears. You know, like you put him down on second turn, you're cracking for two on third turn? Yes. What if you have a removal? The opponent just takes it. It's pretty good. Oh, I'm totally confused. All these numbers and letters. Okay, so he tried to summon another Frost Wielder, however, it was meddled away. And instead he has this Baku. 
I think Kenji's in a lot of trouble here. I agree. Why, do, why does nobody play Blue Black in this format? Um, I wish they told me Blue Black sucks. Said you know. it sucks. Okay. You uh, got nothing better than that for, for Gladola and the Master Force? The, 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 part is like the guys are all small. Okay. Doesn't have tricky tricks like Blue White. Or, I mean, Red Black is apparently reasonably popular. Red Black has all... There's like a great deal of incentive to Red Black. For example, how one spin drafts it, they put it on the left and then they get this flowing and flowing of the, the best removal-ish cards. Mm -hmm. They take high pick 3-3 three, three Ogres. Um, and then well, why the Red? I mean, so red's red more aggressive blue. color than, than blue, and that makes cards like the 3-3 three, three Ogre much more synergistic. So the Red right? Black's actually a little more beat down. Yeah, like say, say you wanted to be like very very control oriented like blue blue the blue black decks tend to be kind of controlish because they're blue and then like you don't want to take all this damage. I don't know. That makes sense. No block? <laughs> Gabe Sang has a war clubbed two three flyer. Feeding down. But Saito has Master Yamabushi in the house. Only five uh, lands. Let's go look at the but Master Yamabushi game. Go, yep. So, match one on the board for Nova. Dave Rude, 2 0 sweep over Kenji Samura. That's the way a lot of people predicted. Match. So, if Gabe Sang can win his game, then Nova's through to the finals. Nasif doesn't even need to get out of game number one. Uh, there you see Nasif and Saito, but we're going to head over to the other table and check out Gabe Sang and Tomohiro Kaji. Because we like monsters. Nassif and Saito is still mired in game one. Nassif maybe has a little bit of an edge. He's got those Honda tokens accumulating. Ooh, with Devouring Rage in his hand. He could cause some, do some damage with all those, Good all those spirit tokens. Good thing that doesn't make Yeah. Meanwhile, Gabe Sang. There you look at the Juggernaut. Rubbing his head. Trying to say, Jamo... Master Yamabushi? That guy... What do I... What... How do I... Alright. I can do this. Team needs me. So what's the guy underneath the Ronin War Club? 100 talent, Tommy. <sighs> Alright. Sang just passes the turn. He can't be too tentative in his play, otherwise he's just going to get gunned out by the Master Yamabushi. It's funny. We sent Rem 134 off to Taco Bell on a lunch run with all our talk of the green 4-3 fatties. Taco Bell should give us, like, 30 cents <laughs> because, like, everything there costs a dollar, so you can't charge them too I'd much. I'd settle for, for some them. tacos. Anyway. Kaji's awesome. He made some of the best plays I've ever seen in my life yesterday. I, yeah, you've been telling the Mike Claire story like, for a while. A, there's this play that he made yesterday that I, oh, cool. when I saw it, I was just like, John Finkel would have been so proud of that play. It was so not obvious. He he uh, did a non-lethal devouring greed that killed his opponent using his own blessing of leeches, and the devouring greed was set up just to keep his opponent's Alpha Strike the next turn, non-lethal long enough for the Blessing of Leeches to take him out. And he was facing off Triple Ophidian because there was Sosuke, Shishiro, and a Spring Caller in play, and they were all giants. There was like no way to really win a fair fight. He's going to draw three cards. He was just rolling the dice that there was no pump on top of his opponent's deck, and uh, Blessing of Leeches took him out. It was awesome. How's this board gonna play out? Uh, well, he can't. Gabe can't really race here, right? If he comes in for what five, the counter attack is way too big. Um, 
All right. What are Gabe, Gabe Stang has taken uh, Gabe Nassif, excuse me, has taken game one from Tommy Hero Saito, cashed in all those spirit tokens on one giant devouring rage, and there you go. What are the, up another game. So the they're up that, a match, a game, and a game. What are the animals that Kaji's got? He's got uh, Black Baku. Is that it? And yes, Black Baku. Who's the guy in the middle? I, I don't. I don't think we can get you, Kaji. We're too busy tracking down the server and faction of the uh, guild on one board. Gabe's crashing. We've got. We've got important things to figure out here. Our man on the floor can't be bothered with these trivialities like what features Kaji has in play. Gabe's crashing here, right? So let's. That's five. Am I correct? Does he have any tricky tricks that would punish a non-block? What's he got here? Oh, like the breath. breath. And what are the other cards? Indomitable Will. And Mending Sargeous Hands. Sargeless Alliance is the answer for all you World of Warcraft fans. The play of the Alliance, that's, that's the human guild. And, or the human, the good guy side of the, the whole fight. I don't care. Alright, sorry. And on the Sargeless side. Enough, enough of World of Warcraft. Kachi does indeed cra slam everybody into the red zone. Smashing. Okay. Or after damage. Sang uses mending hands. Oh, he's racing it up. Interesting. So he's kind of gambling. But actually, no, he can... Does he if, win this race? No, no, well, here it goes. Kachi's not at 12 anymore, right? It's 9 to 8. Okay, so Kaji took four from twelve down to eight no last block, turn. So he's just gonna. Triple. Sang took three. Well, he would have taken six, but he takes three. He's gonna triple shoot, which puts Gabe down to six, which is potentially lethal alpha if, if there's no blocker. Yeah. yeah obviously, he, put, he just drew a land, which we know. Um, Sang was. Yeah. Uh, here comes three. Yeah, I Sang was hoping he could draw a creature or something. So that well, I, if he draws something to like damage through, maybe another prevention spell, he can come in potentially as a pump from the from the uh, Indomitable Will, and he can use the Breath to force damage through against a single blocker of a single color. Right. But I can't see Gabe winning this one. No, like, I think he was trying. To, he took a turn to try to race. But he should just say go, then like chump chump and shoot six times with the with the. Master Yamabushi. Yeah, definitely looks like Yamabushi a, is going to even this at a game of peace. What a fair card. It's going to pass. Or Alpha Strike. <laughs> Into a potentially terrible position. <laughs> He's gonna put that in front of yeah, the Mastriam. Yeah, can actually kill it, right? Cast blessed or indomitable will. Oh wait, but there's there three. There's lethal on it. Wait, why didn't he just shoot? Why didn't he just shoot Gabe. He did. Oh, okay. He did. Should do it, right? Yes. Did no. Shoot Gabe. Yeah, but if it's the game has a healing spell and then like a blessed breath, like that was a terrible attack. Yeah. He hit me for three. Yeah. But he doesn't. So Gabe Sang goes down. Gabe Sang now one game. Kumano one game. So, I mean, we said Saito. I mean, Saito's whole draft was he busted Kumano, twisted his draft around so he could play because that guy just wins games. Damn, and there he did. He I, that just seemed like an unnecessary attack to me. Like Gabe just showed him a healing spell. Like he could have just gone. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Gabe doesn't have anything else. All right, well, that's even at a game of peace. Nova is up one match. They're tied at game of peace there, and Nasif is up a game. So we'll be right back to cover the match, the the, the, the rest of the semifinal matches. Gabe could have just had a rend there. And it yeah, so now we're choosing coming in on the match with Gabe Nasif and Tomohiro Kaji. We're still talking about the, the match between Gabe Sang that we just watched. I thought that was really an unnecessary stretch. Like, there's no way Gabe could win through. Yeah, but he can go 1 plus 1 plus 1 EOT, chump block twice, untap 1 plus 1 plus 1. Oh, Gabe's creature is a hundred town, Kami. I couldn't see what guy it was underneath the war, war club, and therefore I'm using that as an excuse. 
Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, no, I thought I thought Sexus play was or Kaji's play was fun. Decent crowd starting to form. Got the uh, got the guys from Riyadh hanging out, watching, seeing who they're going to play in the finals. We're going to have a lunch break after this match, then we'll be back with the championship round. Nova just needs to win one more game to get through to the finals. They've got nasif has got two chances to win it, and Gabe Saints got one chance to win it. On the other side of the table, one spin is going to have to rattle off three in a row if they want to go to the finals. <coughs> It's funny, it seems like it would be weird to have a finals without a Japanese team. I mean, how many, it's, there's always, ja we're always watching the Japanese, we're always talking about the Japanese. I mean, if we have a match between an American team and like a, a Canadian, Canadian French combo, it's like, what year is this? Is, are we back to the 90s somehow? The first one seemed remarkably final normal. France versus yeah. United States. It's true. And United States with 62 cards defeated France <laughs> by top decking swords <laughs> to plowshares okay. after being successfully Armageddon. Oh, that is not a good draw. Kadama's reach and land. Whose hand is that? Uh, I believe that is Cyclops. Yep. Did play Padoka Gardener, so I guess the land does some stuff. Would you keep that, Carl? Would I? Yeah. You don't want to ask me. I never ever mulligan hands that have landed <laughs> spells. I just like uh, I always keep these hands. And Claire's like, I can't believe you kept that hand. You have no drops till turn four, and I shrug and then draw like two drop, two drop. Uh huh. But he's like, you really didn't deserve to win, and then I throw away the game <laughs> because I didn't deserve to win. I don't want to feel bad later. The other night, I gave Becker a seven for one trade, and. Uh, I still won though. I didn't deserve it though. I skillfully had Hikari in my deck. I think. I don't think I've ever mulliganed a hand that had land spells in it. Six lands. Okay. So he brought with the the gardener instead of accelerating the land. I don't know. I I would. Okay. Six land and one spell. I Ooh. I cash in. I get to get get a look at Nasif's grip. Oh, yeah, but it was sort of Kodama's a five and two. But Kadama's reach is a, a, a mana kind of. That's that's the six one draw in my mind. Kadama's reach is not a spell. I mean, the, the spell you're keeping is thin two land. I don't buy it. All right, Nasif reading the gardener <laughs> with good reason. So Nasif's draw has a bunch of spells. Does so he have enough land to play them? Does he want to summon? Sasuke snakes here, or go with a with a some that, sort of kami. There's no land in that draw, right? He's just got the three. What is that? A is that a three three? Gnarled mass. I love that guy. He's a beater. The seat is a mighty mage. Look at that grip. He has the Open Fist, Green Honden, Yamabushi's Storm, Sosuke's Summons, and okay. some yeah. other card that I can barely read, but I assume that it's awesome. <laughs> cool. Houndmaster. Ronin Houndmaster's his other card, so... He could use some land. Eh, shrug. Oh, he draws cards. Uh, Look at that. Thoughts on playing 5-5 five five here? 5-5 five five sounds like fun. Ob or no? Ob. I will summon the open fist. We will be okay. showing some uh, ESPN shows during lunch. Looks like we got uh, World's Team 99 followed by World's Team 2000. World's so. Team is 99 and 2000. 2000 is a good team. Is that uh, Finkel and Forsyth in those boys? John Finkel, Forsyth, Chris Benefell, and... Nassif's pretty happy with his 5-5. Five five. And uh, who's the other guy? He's from Florida local. 
Right. 99. Frank Fernandez. Frank Fernandez. Okay. 99 was Zvi. <coughs> yeah. Zvi, uh, U.S. National Champion Kyle Rose. John Hunka, who was in attendance this weekend. Sure. And Charles Cornbluth, never to be heard from again. Yeah, those are good teams. Team draft day. That should be fun. But yeah, that's so that's what we'll be playing during the lunch break. The only thing about that old footage is that Cornblith and Z both played this V Bargain ID nineteen deck. Uh -huh. And so the entire ESPN coverage is Chris Pakula and Brian Weissman talking about the probability of, of Z going off and Z <laughs> like tapping his scroll rack like a bunch of times while accumulating more and more cards in here. You make that sound so exciting. Thank you. Whereas 2000 is mighty spells. Meanwhile, while we weren't paying a lot of attention, oh, over on the other table, Saito has both green. Kaji over on the other match has gotten both a red and a black Honden into play. Are you kidding? Is that true, what you just said? Say it out loud, because that is like a Gabe versus Tamahiro fight in both tables. Am I doing... Yeah, we have two Gabes and... It's two Tamahiros, right? Tamahiro Saito and Tamahiro Kenji. It's Hiru and Hiro, but yes. Yeah, but fighting... It's Gabe versus Tomohiro in both matches. Yeah, my spotter on the floor is giving me information about Gabe versus Tomohiro. I'm like, this does not help me. This is both matches. Alright, so there's a 5-5. Five five, and there's some other guys on the other side who aren't 5-5. Five five. Is that a Lone <laughs> Dweller? It is a Lone Dweller. Saito has brought some creatures. He has about a million manas, so if he drew That's all like, he kept in his draw, of course he's got a million manas. If he drew, right. like, purple Myogen, he would be close to being able to cast it. Uh, I'm going to have to stop answering the flame tongue to cover his questions from the boards. What were his questions? Now he wants to know what's in Ravnica. <laughs> Ravnica is full of magical spells and fantastic creatures. <laughs> it's right on the booster pack. It hasn't changed Magical in spells the last, and fantastic creatures. <laughs> in the last 11 years, Ravnica, like other sets, is full of right. magical spells and fantastic creatures. Gnarled mass greater than Salma Hayek, according to Catfish. Um, apparently, Catfish has never seen <laughs> any of the following movies. <laughs> From Dusk Till Dawn, uh, Dogma, and movies in which Salma Hayek did not play a supernatural exotic dancer. <laughs> All right, Nassif shoving into the red zone. Houndmaster came down. Still got the 5-5 fi the five five open fist. Does Nassif have a uh, giant growth? I just want to double check here. Does he have it? Kodama's Mike. He does not have Kodama's Mike. Book. What do you think of Saito's block? A um, bunch of guys in front of the 5-5. Five five. Does he have a spirit in his graveyard? No, right? No, no. just preach. I don't know if that was a... Does the seat have some sort of great follow-up play here? This seems remarkably unexciting. I mean, he's got a handful of spells. Do you kill him? Yeah. He's got Yaman Bushi Storm. Yeah. Yeah, Oh, he doesn't have the mountain. Oh, yeah. Okay, Yamabushi Storm in his hand. Oh, there, okay. Now oh, that changes everything. Nice. Yamabushi Storm. Oh. Smash. So that's a nice, uh, basically a two for four trade, right? Two for four seems alright. That's called sculpting the perfect hand. Wow. Oh, boy. It looks like they're going to need Nassif to win this, though, because uh, overall on the other side, Kaji's board uh, now includes Master Yamabushi, in top. addition to Double Honden. Please, little top. Land. Please, little got? top. Please, little top. Land. Little top. Help. Gabe Sang falling down to Master Yamabushi in double Honda out of Tomohiro Kaji. Huh. Wait, so I was right? What? 
Yeah, yeah Nachi Yamabushi's going to win that match. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought that Gabe Sang would be the one who falls. It's and true. that Nova would come back and win, and that's what it looks like right here. Nassif's certainly in good place. He just has so many more spells than Saito. I and the 4 for 2 last turn was well well pulled off. Two commentators oh. saying you can't bet against the Juggernaut. <laughs> Perhaps there are people who forgot that <laughs> I called it's all the matches in Columbus The Juggernaut's going to win. I know, I said that Nova was going to win. You missed the final. You, you know, you had Kanali in the final. I had Kanali in the in first place. I actually watched him play Magic. <laughs> All right, Nassif crunches over. I mean, I might He's not have been able to remember that so. Undertale and Kami could fly, but... <laughs> Gabe Sang is getting banged for two a turn, two cards a turn. Now he's getting Master Yamabushi. Uh... I think if there was a ref, there would be a, the fight would have just been stopped. <laughs> and Kami the Hunt is Nassif's latest addition to his board. Nassif is praying Saito's that Saito seven. doesn't summon engineered explosives. That would demolish his board. Top? Any help? No, there it is. Gabriel Nassif, ladies and gentlemen, the reigning player of the year, wins his match 2-0 and sends Team Nova through to the finals. Game, set, and match right there. So our finals is going to be Nova versus We Add. That should be a fun one. Teams are all going to go off and... Uh, that was, uh, I think that was, that was We Add. We Add from the crowd. Minus Chambers. <laughs> so who's the crowd rooting for? You guys like Nova's chances? Or is the crowd like We Add? I don't think... All right. Chambers is too cool to vote. He's like, <laughs> shrug, shake, shake. So that's the setup, and we'll be back. Uh, he lives with Tim Ayton. You can't imagine that he would ever smile. Should be about uh, 2 o'clock Eastern. We should be back with the draft. So stay tuned. We're going to go take a lunch break. We'll be back in a little bit over an hour with the Pro Tour Atlanta Championship match. So I'm Randy Bueller. I've enjoyed talking to you with Mike Flores. We'll see you then.